Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth video in a new series we're putting out here from Nielsen Networking on security awareness. And during the first few videos, we discussed things such as phishing, uh, how to prevent it, what can happen if you don't prevent it, um, strong passwords, uh, complexity of those strong passwords. We talked about the, stis, the, the standards put out by NIST. We discussed in depth what ransomware is and how that can be what happens if you are unlucky and you do fall for a phishing attack and they do compromise your system. So today we're going to take it a little bit different and we're going to talk about data and system backups. And you would use these when you find yourself in a position like this poor gentleman is. You're staring down a screen, um, it's telling you your personal files are encrypted and that you need to make a payment for them to give you a private key to decrypt the files that have been encrypted. And if you don't do it by X amount of time, they are going to wipe your data. Um, and I, and as, as I discussed in that ransomware video, just a heads up, the experts recommend you do not ever pay a ransom. Doing so, um, can lead to two different outcomes. Sure, they could give you the decryption key, but that doesn't happen 80% of the time. Or um, they just they take your money and they don't give you at all. And I have heard, and I, I don't believe I've seen this documented, but I believe once you are targeted and you pay the, the ransom and they give you the key back, they'll continue to target you or attempt to target you in the future. So best practice is to not pay them and go a different route, which would be to restore from backup, which is why we're gonna discuss the importance of backups. So, backups protect against human errors, hardware failures, virus attacks, ransomware, power failure, natural disasters. Uh, they can save you time and money if any of these failures occur, occur. And you might be saying, oh well, how is this gonna help me if I have a power failure? You know, my computer's out, a backup's not gonna do anything, but backups usually come with online portals where you could actually go and restore from the online portal and download those files to your smartphone, your um, laptop, or if you went from one area to another, maybe you're at a hotel uh, or you went to work and you have access to power and internet and everything, you would then be able to download. Same with a natural disaster or hardware failure. Your hard drive's done. You're going to need to restore from a backup unless you want to try to see if you're lucky enough to have a um, data recovery specialist restore your your broken hard drive uh, for a small fortune. So some best practices for backups. Automate your backups. This does not mean you can just set it and forget it as you'll hear. It means you want to automate those, schedule the time that they're going to run, but verify that all is going according to plan every now and then. You know, I would I would suggest when you get them set up, go back in there in a week and go back in there in a month. And then, you know, what, set yourself a reminder to check once a month to make sure um, ideally once a week, I know that some of that some of you that's going to be too much, but you do need to verify that they are getting done. Um, and not only do you need to do that, you need to confirm that your backup has in fact backed up the data you requested, and that there are no errors when you attempt to open one of those files. And along this mindset, test your backups, test restoring your backup. Go there, restore a file that you have backed up to your desktop, say, and make sure you can open it. And that will verify that yes, you are backing it up, you are backing up the data you want, and that you can actually open it. Um, and another thing, if possible, store your backups off site. If you are storing your backups on an external hard drive and the house burns down, chances are your computer and your hard drive are both gonna be gone. Um, so ideally the cloud, or if you have to do it to a USB, this won't help you with fire, but I would recommend you back it up and disconnect it because it will help you with a ransomware attack. But it, again, it's not gonna help you if, if you have a fire or you know there's a natural disaster that wipes out your whole house. Um, the only thing that's gonna help that is if it's actually in a different geolocation, like say if you're in New York, you'd want your um, backup data center to be in California. Um, and the last thing is something known as snapshot, which is basically a, an image take, taken of like a picture <laughs> of your computer, how it is at that moment in time and stored. Um, and these are wonderful. The only problem with them is they take up a lot of space. 
But if you have the space, you have an external drive with a lot of space, it has to be bigger than your hard drive. Uh, not by much, but it does have to be a little bit bigger. And it will it will literally take a mere copy of what your hard drive is. And if your hard drive were to crash, you could put in a brand new hard drive and drop the mirror down and it would restore it to that exact moment of the snapshot. Great technology. They even have snapshots that will do incremental snapshots and then combine it into a big one, meaning you take the master snapshot on day one and then you take incremental backups that are applied to the master snapshot daily, meaning just the changes that you've made to your system since then. Those are a lot less overhead and um, they will build you out a complete snapshot that you can restore. So that that's, if you can manage that, that is an awesome option to utilize. If not, you know, just try to make sure you have a cloud backup. Um, so here are some solutions for backup if you're gonna be doing this on your own. Windows users, it comes with something called file history. I believe it's still called backup and recovery, but uh, what they recommend nowadays is you use their tool known as file history. And to get to that, you can see here, you're going to click your start menu. You're going to go to settings, update and security, backup and add a drive. And they're going to want you to add an external or network drive that you will then back up your files to that you will select on the next step. Mac users, you have it even easier and there's almost no excuse in my mind why you cannot back up using Time Machine. Time Machine, it's so easy to use and such a great and powerful tool. All you literally have to do is go out and buy yourself, you know, a, a low expense backup drive, maybe $50 or less. I'm not even sure what they cost, but they're, they're inexpensive for what you get out of them. You would plug it in and the, the operating system on the Mac is going to prompt you and say, hey, do you want to use this as a time machine backup drive? You click yes, you'll set a schedule for how often you want to do it, and you'll be done. But then again, you should go back in every now and then under system preferences and look at time machine backups and verify that it is working. Uh, it is a slick, slick program. It is very, very cool and very easy to use. And again, there is no reason not to do this. Um, it's so it's 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 a no-brainer. Uh, there is also software as a service, SaaS backup tools. These are going to be your pay-for services. And the first one I'm going to recommend is iDrive. I do personally use iDrive and have experience with it. Um, it offers the most bang for the buck. It gives you unlimited amount of machines um, with up to five or ten terabyte options. Um, and this includes phones, Android, Mac, iOS, Windows. It can do it all, and it works great. Uh, there's also another service out there known as Carbonite. This is a big player in the industry. I personally don't have any experience with it. I hear it works really well. I hear there's a catch in some fine print that it won't automatically download or upload your large files. I don't know if that's for sure, but I believe I read that on Tom's Hardware or something. Um, so you do want to pay attention to the fine print because this might download 99% of your stuff, but not those really large pictures or something that mean a lot to you. And if you come the day you needed to restore a backup and to find out you don't have those critical pictures, you're going to be pretty upset. Uh, the last one is Backblaze. And again, I don't have any experience with this, but this was highly recommended as well. Apparently, it's the least expensive of all the solutions, and it's also supposed to be one of the easiest to use. Um, in my experience, all of these are pretty straightforward. Um, but uh, again, I only have experience with iDrive. And no, I'm not sponsored by iDrive. I've just had really good experience using it. Um, open source backup tools. Open source means they're community tools kept by the community, therefore they're free. Uh, sometimes they do have uh, open source where they actually have like paid services and you get a higher end, but the core um, tools are free. And some of them are Clonezilla, great, great tool, free, free tool that you actually can take complete images of your computer. Um, it used to be on a, um, a CD back in the day when I used it. Now it's on a USB. You plug it in, it boots up, it asks you for an external drive, you plug in an external drive, and you can take an entire image of a computer. And then if that hard drive again were to crash or whatever, you would be able to restore it. It's, it's the same thing basically as a snapshot. Uh, great, great to have if you have that external drive with space. And again, it's 100% free. F backup is a, a, an actual backup solution where Clonezilla is an imaging solution that takes the whole entire computer. F backup lets you select certain files and folders individually to backup as you want. Uh, they do have a free version along with a paid version that gives you some more features. I have personally used back, F backup before I used iDrive. It's a great product. Um, but I don't believe, well, actually, you. 
you can put it on a Google Drive, I believe. Yes, Google Drive says right there, um, a removable disk or network drive. But I don't believe you could put it on like um, an iDrive or uh, an Amazon Web Services or anything like that. I think Google Drive is the only one they offer. But it is a good tool. And even the paid version where you get a few more bells and whistles that you probably don't need, honestly. Um, but even that is very inexpensive. Last one I'll mention just for any of you Linux guys out there is RSync. RSync actually will run on a Mac too if you can get to the... Um, the uh, command line and it's, it's a great tool for syncing directories um, it works awesome and it's really fast so um, there's something for you 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 all out there you know you got the Mac stuff you got the Linux stuff you got the Windows stuff um, so at the end of the day I hope you you learned here and I hope you do take my warning don't be one of those people that does not have a backup you don't want to put yourself in a terrible position make sure to back up your important data. I can't tell you how important it is. You know, it, you, everyone always says, well, they won't happen to me, or, oh, I have, you know, two hard drives. What's the likelihood of both of them crashing? They don't have to crash. What if they, what if the house catch on fire? What if, what if you get a virus? Um, there's so many things that not having a backup is going to cause you so much pain. So just go out and do it. There's really no reason not to. Um, and there's so many, um, options out there for you today that are all easy to use. So please take my advice. If there's one thing you take from this video, go out and find yourself a backup provider and get your data backed up. You will thank me when the day comes. So if you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a like. Uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and subscribe. You can share this with people. You can use this video at, at work, at home, at play, wherever you want to do with it. Uh, subscribe for future videos. I do plan to continue to put content out on a weekly basis. Um, not always on security awareness topics. A lot of them will be around security, cybersecurity. I'm a big cybersecurity guy. It's what I do. Um, but also I'm going to, I'm going to do some how to's on, you know, where we'll jump on some VMs together and we'll go through some processes and some, some common issues with, you know, PCs, Macs, Linux OSs, put some suggestions in the comments if you want, email me um, and I'll, I'll put some videos out. Alrighty, y'all have a great day. Thank you.